Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, <clears throat> Thomas Janak. We are looking at the week of December 21st, winter solstice, to December the 27th, 2020. Christmas week. How awesome. <coughs> Love Christmas. There won't be videos until the second week of January because it is my experience, I've been recording episodes for you guys since 2017, that normally in the last week of December and in the first week of January I get much less viewers and since this is quite a bit of work doing all this, editing it, sharing it, um, I think I deserve some off time too. So we will be back um, in the, on the second week or for the second week um, of January 2021. So we're still in the star sign of Sagittarius. We're going into Capricorn on the 22nd, but since this week starts on the 21st, we would still or we will still look at the star sign of Sagittarius first. And then when we're back in January, we will we will start with Capricorn. Okie dokie. So <clears throat> I will not bore you in other in in World Packets <clears throat> with Christmas and Christmas energy unless the guides tell me to. What I will tell you, uh, because that's important as well, is that the winter solstice that is starting on the 21st, the beginning of this week that we're looking at, is one of the most powerful energies ever. It's a massive new beginning, a massive shift happening. So and because it is happening on Monday, the first day of this week. Anything and everything that the guides will say will be much more heightened um, and therefore is much more powerful. So if they give you advice or whatever they tell you, um, they really mean it, if that makes sense, right? So let's go and talk about the overall energy for the week ahead. Let's see what we got before we go into Sagittarius. Let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, I just talked about the solstice. And what we're having here is basically the seven star sisters and uh, star ancestors. So what that means is, <clears throat> sorry, uh, because I do a lot of shamanic work, they um, therefore guide us towards uh, the stars. Um, the idea was, or is, or the story is, that um, the seven sisters were actually earth women who weren't so happy um, with their husbands and um, asked the guides to help them escape. And so they did. One star was a child which has um, unfortunately um, over time burned out, which means the seven star system is actually only six stars, even though there's still a seven stars. It's much less um, prominent, if that makes sense. And then the, um, the husbands <laughs> followed <clears throat> the sisters <coughs> and they are now uh, the star sign of Cancer, if that makes sense, or the star cluster. Uh, of cancer. So that's a long story. Please Google it. Um, what I'm trying to say or what the tri guides are trying to show us is that um, this is about creating, bursting creations. They um, weren't happy. They decided to leave together and, um, you know, and then because they, they, they asked the guides and went with the universe, <coughs> they agreed to um, give guidance to others that need guidance um, and hence they became stars. So this is about birthing creations. This is about you. This is the overall energy for the week for all of us. This is about you and us, everybody, is to say like what I really want to happen. This is a really good week to make that um, known and um, Manifested with the universe, normally what I always do on, 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 on the winter solstice is I write down everything I want to, want to, <laughs> I want to get rid of or I, I no longer need and then write on the other side of a piece of paper what I really would like and what I 
want to manifest and then burn it and give it to the universe uh, to uh, transform that into <clears throat> manifestation, if that makes sense. And then we have the star ancestors, which is basically where they're saying to us this week, while there's guidance for all of us happening, <coughs> rather than just thinking like, oh, this is a great week and um, all we need to do is, is wait for guidance. No. What we are asked to do is, yes, there is a lot of guidance and it's a massive energy shift uh, around this week. This is the time where you look a little deeper. This is the time where you look at what is it I really want to let go? And does it make sense to let it go now? Because maybe not all lessons have been learned. And equally, what I'm trying to manifest or what I want to manifest is it actually a positive thing? Is it just a want? Are it just things that I want? Or is this actually making any change in the spiritual sense? So look deeper this week, pay a little more attention to how you speak, how you manifest, what it is you want to create. Be honest at all times to yourself. So that's the over energy for the week ahead. Quite powerful energy, so to speak. And now we're going into the first star sign. Like I said, Sagittarius. Last time for a while that Sagittarius will be the first star sign because when we're back, we are in Capricorn. Let's have a look at what the, what the guides have for um, Capricorns. So, that's actually interesting. <coughs> I always say that because I find everything interesting, but <laughs> it's, it's just how I talk and I <coughs> do find it interesting because what we have for Sagittarians is, is two things. It is time for Sagittarians this week to actually step up, to not just talk, but manifest what it is you want to manifest. And at the same time, this sounds a bit conflicting, but it actually isn't. What they're asking you is to um, loosen your grip, right? Don't be super focused on that one thing or these two things that you really want to see happening because you might lose sight of what else could be manifested and seen. So what they're saying is don't be overly focused on just one thing, right? just because you want this to happen so badly. right? That will not help you achieve proper closure, proper feeling of, wow, I finally manifested this into being, if that makes sense. So what they're saying to you is loosen your grip, but at the same time, step up and, um, you know, manifest. Um, the, the way they're showing it to me at the moment is just always the same because that's, that's the best idea that I have come across is really writing it out, burn it, right? So step up, speak up, if that makes sense, but don't be overly focused on just the one or the, or the most immediate thing that you can think of. Remember, overall energy was look deeper. So, Sagittarians, look deeper. That's all we got for <clears throat> Sagittarians. And now we're going into Capricorn, second star sign of the week. Okay. <laughs> Not a bad week at all, not an easy week necessarily. Because what you have is basically, um, because remember we have this massive shift on the 21st, first day of this week. So you have a spontaneous awakening almost. All of a sudden you got, you're fully there. How awesome, right? But when you have a full awakening or a spontaneous awakening where you all of a sudden like, oh my God, that's what's going on. Bloody hell. <laughs> right? So when you all of a sudden have a clear vision, that's when the guides also say to you, yes, you have a clear vision, but you have to also allow for things that don't work to sever them without anger. If this should be an awakening for Capricorns this week where you feel like, wow, I felt this, but I really didn't know that it was like this, let's just say as a, as a scenario. Let it go without anger, just trust, because you finally got it. You finally found out 
that is the way things are and I want that to be different and I'm not accepting um, more of the same. That's where the guys are saying to you is, that's why you have the blue flame. You have, uh, it's called a blue flame. You have um, a full awakening, which is also blue flame, blue, um, you know, uh, expressing yourself, if that makes sense. But please, without anger, everything this week for Capricorns makes more sense if you let it go with love. That's why I said earlier, it might be an awesome week because you get a lot of stuff, but maybe not the easiest week because if you are affected by things and maybe they are painful, um, it's quite normal um, to get angry about it. All the guides are saying is anger doesn't serve you. Okie dokie, that was that week for Capricorns going into Aquarius. Let's see what we got for Aquarians. Okay. For Aquarians, it is important to realize that you're still healing and that you still have emotional healing happening that is going through your system and that is coursing through your veins. And at the same time, new beginnings are already manifesting, are already happening. There is a new life starting right now the reason why you can't necessarily see it or feel it is simply because you're still in pain. Okay, short and sweet for Aquarius. And now we're going into Pisces. My star sign, I just want to reshuffle. Here we go, let's see what we got for us Pisceans. And they give us three things to look at. Got no space here. <laughs> what they're asking us Pisceans to do this week as the year sort of closes, coming to it's coming to a close, and with this new massive shift on the 21st of December, is to really stop being defensive, right? If you cause pain or we cause pain this year, or we did wrong on some level it's time to say, I'm sorry, okay? It also is time to say, I'm sorry, I am no longer willing to be a part of this. So this is about letting go, but to be non-defensive, really important, just go with the flow, because we have big picture thinking, if that makes sense. So what they're saying is, because things are ending, and it doesn't mean that there's, you know, let's say necessarily relationships ending it just means that things that are stale and that haven't worked for a long time um us pisceans we just are not bothered anymore um to fight for these things we're just saying like no obviously it doesn't work so i let that go and if i caused pain in the process um of of learning this lesson I sincerely apologize, really, really important, but big picture means there's more to come. This is not the end, okay? What I'm feeling for us Pisceans is not to overthink. This might not be a big thing, that's what I'm getting to. Might not be a massive thing. This is more a thing of accepting and understanding and saying that needed to happen. And um, I will just get through this because the last card that we have, is basically um, all about Venus energy, as they call it, uh, pleasure, joy, in a way, making love to life. So be love, be in love, give love, feel love, because that's the highest energy we can create. And in the high energy of love, that's where you become defenseless. And they're like, you know, I let it go with love and for new beginnings, I invite them in with love. The feeling that I'm getting is because, you know, um, it is also Christmas time, a time that is, I'm not a, personally, I'm not a very religious person, right? But obviously um, I'm quite a believer of uh, my guides. So I know the universe is sort of governed by, by guides. 
but I'm not religious. And so I'm not trying to, to, um, to make this sound religious, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, <clears throat> what I'm getting for us Pisceans is because we're also in a week where the topic of love is important. Someone, you know, you, you give a gift, someone, you tell someone you love them. And maybe it is easier to say this on Christmas. <clears throat> so use the energy of this, you know, oh, Christmas is awesome and we're we are all friendly. Use it to allow yourself to get to that stage where you can express love easily and also accept it. Because what I'm also getting is <clears throat> that some Pisceans out there really have not mastered um, receiving love without questioning it yet. And all the guys are saying is, with the, with the 21st of December being a winter, winter solstice, powerful, really awesome, powerful energy. That's when you allow for positivity and for real love to happen. Right? I hope that made sense. That was us Pisceans. Let me just put these cards away. And now we're going into Aries. Let's see what they got for Aries. We're looking at the week of December the 21st to the 27th, 2020. Like I said, I will then take a break. Um, we will be back for the second week of January. And here's what we got for Aries. Okay. Hmm. How can I phrase this best? Because I don't want to sound depressing. <laughs> Aries will not have um, a low energy week, and yet we have, it's called mother's milk. It means deep love. It's, it's, it's about births as a portal. It's like, it's like I'm birthing something. I'm, 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 I'm finally coming out of something and I, and I give birth to a new me. <clears throat> and that, <coughs> excuse me, might be frightening for Aries. Don't be frightened. You will be fine as you step out of the old version that you were. Really, really important. Because we have um, Earth School is, is, the, is the card that is called. Actually, I'm, 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 I've been given the Star Seed, it's called, Star Seed uh, uh, card deck, just to have a look at it. And I have used it in readings and um, so this is really quite a deck. <laughs> and so I felt I want to use this for this week where the solstice is, is happening, if that makes sense. So as we, as, as Aries, as Aries, as Aries steps out of old, stale energy, becoming, renewing, becoming anew, starting anew, um, this is where the universe immediately <laughs> will, will remind you of life lessons that still need to continue um, to be understood and mastered and experienced. So, in other words, therefore, this will not be the quickest week um, and necessarily the absolutely happiest week because there's a nagging feeling of, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm letting go of a lot of stuff, who am I? And all the guides are saying is, you're still awesome, you're still you, you're not lost, you're just renewed and so you get to know yourself again, and that takes time. Allow yourself to take that time. Okay? That was Aries. <clears throat> Going into Taurus. Let's see what we got for Taurus. Okay. Excuse me. So what we have for Tereans is to trust that there is a plan, to trust that you have purpose, to trust that things are getting better, to trust also in the joy that you feel, trust that things do not turn sour because they may have in the past. This is the week to extend trust to people and situations really really important 
and to remember that there is a soul plan. Your soul came here um, full of plans, <laughs> you know, to achieve something, to learn something, to give teachings, to receive teachings. And all the guides are saying to you, that soul plan is very much unraveling as you walk through life. And because of the, um, the solstice of the 21st, um, and therefore this massive shift, you may feel a bit out of thoughts, you may feel a bit like, well, <laughs> kind of thing. And all I'm saying is, enjoy. Enjoy Christmas, right? Enjoy everything that has to do with, you know, feeling like young again, if that makes sense, like, you know, like the child, um, you know. Um, so enjoy everything that is happening around you. And remember that even though you may not always know where you're going and what's happening, the point is your soul, your soul's plan is on point. There's nothing to worry about at all this week for Taurians. Okay, so um, I have to make this a bit personal right now. Um, my father is a Taurian who only passed away uh, in November. Um, his energy shows up here. And so I um, just want to say to my, to my father, uh, wherever you are, I love you and I'm thinking about you and it's all good. I've got nothing to forgive and we're good. Okay, just wanted to say that because when the guys give me the energy, I hadn't expected them to do this while I do a video, but here we are. That was Taurus going into Gemini. Let's have a look at what we got for Gemini. <clears throat> Geminis are basically asked to trust that things are happening even though you may not understand it because they don't look like anything you have done before. It feels like you're still inside what we call the cosmic womb. You're, in, you're still nurtured by the universe. But because things are changing around you, you may feel a little lost and all the guys are saying is no your life is a canvas and you are holding the brush so you have now the opportunity even though it feels like you know that's the thing about christmas that they sort of give me it's it's a rather structured time you know there's some um, christmas day and boxing day and la 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 you know so it's it feels rather hmm what's the word well pre pre bleh. Predicted. You, you, it's very predictive. You know what's going to happen on this day. You know where you're going on this day. You know what you're going to do on this way. And, and even though there is this, ah, oh, here we go again feeling, <laughs> it's really important to not lose track of maybe starting to paint a completely new life for you. Right? Because of the shift on the 21st, all they're saying is now is the time to take a deep breath. And manifest what you want, right? Your life is a canvas and you decide how to draw and paint um, your own life, okay? And thus create your own future. That was Gemini. Going into Cancerians. Okay. What I get for Cancerians is the feeling that you need to realize that anything and everything that happened to you has happened before. Um, the feeling that I'm getting is that history at certain points repeats itself. And all the guides are saying is you have gone, you have gone through stuff before and you have always managed. So what they're asking you to realize is that that memories that you might find mm, weird because you can see things in situations and it reminds you of something, that does not mean they're all the same. Just because history repeats itself as such, the way you react to it can still be different. So memories that the guides give you where you feel, oh, this must be a warning sign, um, what the guides are giving me, they're not warning signs. They're gifts. They're for you to realize, 
oh, been there before, still here. Awesome, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so, in other words, new doors are opening. New doors are opening and you decide, will I go through these new doors? You decide. And in a way, <laughs> what the guides are saying to you is, uh, Cancerians, be a wild card. Don't plan everything. Don't overanalyze everything. Don't talk everything to death within your mind. Just be a wild card. A door is opening, or maybe you open it yourself. Does it feel great? You want to try it? Go through it. Okay? That was Cancerians. And now we're going into Leo. And like I said, we're looking at the week of December the 21st to the 27th, 2020. This is the last video of the year 2020. And we will be back in the second week of January 2021. What they're saying to Leos sounds a bit weird. <laughs> they're asking you to look at your inner child. Be lighthearted. Also know that there's an inner child inside you. That doesn't mean you have to have a, a, a mad half hour every half hour. <laughs> but they're asking you to be a bit more, more lighthearted because this new energy of feeling, yeah, what's the worst thing that can happen? Let's just, let's just explore will help you because what they're saying to you really is to forge a path rather than follow a path that maybe hasn't quite gotten you where you feel it should have gotten you, if that makes sense, right? So if you felt like, mm, okay, this is not a bad path, but somehow might not be so perfect, or you think something needs to happen on that path so that things are better, make it happen, forge. Don't follow. Right? Short and sweet for Leo. <clears throat> we have Virgo, Libra and Scorpio left. Let's now go <clears throat> into Virgo. Let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> I quite like that. Virgos. What the universe is saying to you is while they're asking you to look at the world and this week be adventurous, jump right in. Say, yeah, I'm here, let's just go and you know explore and be a bit quirky and um, be a bit more, um, uh, what's the word, a bit more adventurous, yeah, be a bit more out there. That's what the guides are, are advising you to do this week in order to, to make shifts, be a bit more spontaneous, maybe also a bit more... Um, in charge of things, but at the same time, remember to serve the world you're in. Don't just go like, okay, I'm gonna do whatever the heck I want because that's not what the guides just said. They said to you like, be more adventurous, right? Be a bit more outgoing. That doesn't mean you walk all over people, okay? Or situations, or you dismiss uh, someone else or hurt their feelings because you feel non free. So don't hear that wrong. Uh, Virgos, but um, this is the week to jump right in. So whatever is happening <clears throat> this Christmas week uh, for you, um, enjoy it all. Take it all to heart and just jump in and, you know, enjoy. Okay, that was Virgo going into Libra. Second last star sign of the week. Okay, <laughs> Libra, you've got work to do. This is Christmas week, which means there's a lot of stuff where you probably either asked to be a part of, if that makes sense, um, and therefore you have less time. Should you be one of those, um, where are we? <laughs> uh, Libras. Yeah, did I say Libra? Yeah, Libra. I meant Libra. I said Virgo, we already did Virgo. So I, so I meant Libra. So, <laughs> Libra's. Yeah, yeah, Libra. Sometimes I just mess things up. That's why I always put the name of a star sign in. Just because I say something else, don't mind me. Always trust the written word. <laughs> what they're saying to Libra's is, you, anything that is unaligned this week must go. Don't just give in to the hustle and bustle and maybe there's, okay, well, I promised to do this. I better do this. Right? They're not asking you to say to people, 
I'm not doing what I promised to do, but it's, it's, it's realizing is if this isn't aligned to your purposes, then eventually you will have to let that go, which means you make a decision if you let it go this Christmas, on Christmas, or if you say like, okay, well, I'm not going to spoil someone else's Christmas, uh, you know, so the decision is up to you. All the guides are saying to you is anything unaligned must really go. Because that's important because of the soul growth. You let stuff go. You feel like this isn't, it isn't really who I am. And you let that go, if that makes sense. And that will automatically, or can automatically, I should say, cause some, some conflict. Right? That's just the way it is. And all the guides are saying is stay kind at all times. But also look at yourself, your needs, your wants, and act accordingly. That was Libra, have I said before, that was Libra. <laughs> and now we're going into the very last star sign of the week, which is uh, Scorpio. Okay. <laughs> the reason why I smile is because this is not the easiest thing to hear, and yet it is not a bad thing at all. What the guides are saying to you is, you are not for everyone. You might not be everyone's cup of tea, right? But that's fine. All the guys are saying is you may not be for everyone, but you're also not alone. It's a very short message here for, um, for Scorpios. When changes come your way, where you feel misunderstood, you feel, mm, when I'm, not, I'm not getting any, anywhere here, or I'm not appreciated, then remember that if you let that situation go, new situations will, oh, no, new doors will open, new situations can occur. Okie dokie, short, sweet for Scorpio. That's all we have time for. Thank you all for being so supportive all throughout the year. Have a lovely Christmas and a happy new year, and I see you all in the new year. Bye.